Well, good afternoon. Just checking the technicians if I can start or perfect. It's been a while since uh, talking to a live audience. So, uh, well, thanks for, for showing up and uh, yeah, really nice to share my story with you. Today, I'm going to uh, present you um, a little bit. Oh, it's. Oh, we just. Yeah, sorry. We tested the presentation, so sorry for that. Uh, I'm going to introduce my company, Enschede Textielstad, to you, and then also some collaborations we had with uh, Frankehuis, with textile recycling, and then I'll dive deeper into uh, the Text Plus Foundation, of which Enschede Textielstad is uh, a part, um, and share some of our collaborations there and the challenges that we take on uh, within the Twente region. So, um, yeah, let's start. Um, yeah, I founded Enschede Textielstad eight years ago. Uh, I had no textile knowledge or any experience in the industry. I studied communication science and lived in Enschede, and I knew that, well, a lot of textile production uh, used to be there. Um, yeah, and when the Rana Plaza factory collapsed in 2013, I thought, well, there's some action uh, that needs to be taken. Um, can we bring textile production closer to home? Um, produce in a more sustainable and social way and well the idea was born but there was a lot of work to be done to actually start uh, a textile production factory well um, I'm gonna share a short movie but first I'm gonna introduce sorry I'm a bit mixed up with all the slides um, yeah, this is actually an introduction of all the partners that are in the uh, Text Plus Foundation. Uh, six partners uh, joined forces to really close the uh, su yeah, circular sustainable uh, industry together. Um, more about that later on. Uh, but first, a short introduction of Enschede Textielstad. Enschede used to be the beating heart of the European textile industry. We built upon this legacy by starting our truly sustainable weaving mill. We produce in a conscientious way that doesn't harm people and the planet. Our mission is to keep improving the textile industry. Yeah, so you've seen some of the partners of Text Plus already in the video. And uh, well, when I started, I was fortunate enough to meet the owner of the last remaining weaving mill in Enschede. Uh, he invited me to uh, come over and weave some samples on their looms. And well, eight years later, uh, we're still producing there. We're collaborating closely. Uh, we've got our own machines there. Uh, we use their machines. So that's a really nice collaboration between two companies uh, in the production of uh, sustainable textiles. Um, at Enschede Textielstad, we have uh, several pillars in our production. Uh, one of them being that we try to produce as sustainable as pro possible. Um, yeah, we're not, not there yet. There's always something to, to be improved, but I think that uh, yeah, everybody can uh, agree on that, that you're never finished with uh, sustainability and circularity. Um, we want to use as many post-consumer materials as possible. Um, we source only in the European Union so that we know who our suppliers are. We know them uh, by name, we can call them. And uh, yes, in that way, we know that uh, both socially and uh, environmentally, uh, yarns are produced in a way that we are uh, yeah, fine with. And um, we are considering becoming a plastic-free mill. There's a high demand of recycled polyesters for workwear, but uh, yeah, I'm personally more a fan of uh, natural resources, so uh, we're considering uh, by just taking a stand and weaving with uh, natural resources only. Uh, at the moment, uh, yeah, the biggest part of what we do is uh, recycled cotton anyways. 
Um, and we also uh, yeah, take proximity of a supplier over price. So for instance, if a Belgian supplier can uh, deliver us goods for a higher price than the Spanish uh, supplier, we still choose the Belgian supplier. So yeah, we try to make uh, sustainable uh, decisions in every sense. To lower our, our footprint, we also don't add dye stuff. Um, that means that we also sometimes work with uh, post-production materials that are uh, more colorful than the post-consumer materials. Um, and we try to have mechanical finishes uh, instead of chemical finishes. So one of the examples is that at the moment we're developing uh, a bio-based uh, flame retardant finish so that we can also uh, deliver curtains in uh, more the project uh, contract business. So, yeah, so far we couldn't uh, do that, but uh, yeah, if we achieve this natural finish, then uh, that's also a more sustainable way of um, making curtain fabrics. And um, yeah, my colleagues are not always happy with that business-wise, but we don't ship outside of the U European Union. So I also once had to uh, turn down Target, the American supermarket, because I said, well, uh, we're just not going to ship uh, outside of the U EU, because yeah, if you're a sustainable mill that produces locally, it doesn't make sense to ship worldwide and um, move your goods ag across the globe. So um, yeah, I try to help set th them set up um, production in America. Uh, we have three uh, different production models. So if customers uh, approach us, uh, we're al always, yeah, we start with a conversation about what do you, what do you want, uh, what specifications uh, are you looking for? And um, it can either end up being a ready-made uh, product. Uh, we don't keep any stock, but if we produce, we always have um, some leftovers or the first meters when we set up the machine or uh, fabrics with a little tiny mistake in it. Uh, we sell those on our webshop so that consumers or small designers can uh, yeah, purchase them from our webshop. Made to order is the biggest part of what we do. Um, that's actually um, a material from our material library with minor adjustments. So uh, we develop weaving patterns in different compositions and a designer, for instance, says, well, I want this one, but in a different color, or can you make a striped version of this fabric? And then we uh, start developing and making that fabric. Custom made is something we do uh, mostly with the TextPlus partners. Um, that is, uh, yeah, a customer uh, has a waste stream, brings that over to us and asks, well, we have uh, three to five tons of this material, can you recycle it? We can do that alone. We need the industry for that, but we try to uh, arrange uh, a project where we can uh, recycle the material from our customers and make it into new products as well with the side note that I always urge them to um, think broader and collaborate with others, because if you don't use all your own material for your own product, and if you have leftover fibers, for instance, that need to be stored because you don't want others to use them, I'm not a fan of that. So uh, I'm really about collaboration and making sure that um, yeah, each fiber is used in its full potential. One question that, is, that I get asked a lot is, what is your most sustainable material? And yeah, it's really difficult to answer. Might seem strange, but um, yeah, it really depends on uh, what the fabric is used for, for instance. If a sneaker brand approaches us, it's more sensible for, um, yeah, for, for running shoes, for instance, to, to think of recycled polyester than to think of uh, recycled cotton. But if you want to develop a shirt, I would always recommend uh, to use either wool for a, a fixed shirt or a cotton for a, a dress shirt because it's more uh, circular and it can, can be recycled more easily uh, after it's worn and also the microplastics. So um, that's one of the factors also, of course, uh, how strong does the fabric need, need to be? Um, we develop entirely different uh, upholstery fabrics than we do for uh, fashion purposes, for instance. Um, you always can make them mix like, well, um, do you want a really high percentage of recycled materials? Then you know that your abrasion resistance, for instance, is a little bit uh, lower. Um, so yeah, if you have a consumer good that gets washed quite often, uh, then you can decide to go for more, uh, yeah, more recycled resources and less abrasion or uh, the other way around. So we develop also uh, based on the consumer's needs uh, in that sense. And also, 
I think that the sustainable fabric is not sustainable if no one likes it or if it falls down in the wash immediately. So, um, yeah, it also needs to be aesthetically pleasing and also uh, what the designer or customer wants. What is quite unique for my business is that we don't serve one specific segment. So we're not a weaving mill for fashion or only upholstery or, um, yeah, at one point in time I decided, well, our specialty is recycling and it doesn't matter if we make a really thick upholstery fabric or a really thin shirt fabric or anything in between. We just do recycling and we try to be the best we can uh, in that area. I was really happy with that decision when COVID came because we were doing... Um, uh, yeah, a lot of things for hotels and uh, for restaurants and yeah, that all fell down and luckily we had uh, the fashion as well. So yeah, that's uh, a decision to serve different markets. I want to highlight some of the collaborations we did with Frankehuis. Frankehuis is a textile recycling company that makes uh, fibers from uh, waste materials. Uh, one of the gimmicks that actually, yeah, attracted quite a lot of attention uh, was the tampons that we recycled. Um, I was there once and I saw a lot of uh, bills with, with uh, white fibers and green ropes sticking out. So I asked, well, what is that? Uh, can we use that? Uh, and they, uh, yeah, together we developed a yarn that uh, was used in a wedding dress, in a uh, menswear jacket as a lining. Uh, yeah, it, it got a life on its own. Uh, and for me, it was just the, the intention to um, yeah, to showcase that if you can make a beautiful textile out of, out of a tampon, then you can make a textile out of anything. Um, this was a really nice collaboration. The other two pictures of a shoe designer and a fashion designer that wanted to uh, make an entirely Dutch uh, collection. So they sourced all their materials in Holland. So they had uh, handpun yarns, uh, they had yarns from Texperium, various resources. Um, and they made shoes and uh, dresses out of it. Uh, the dress is made from uh, discarded supermarket uniforms that Franke Huis uh, recycled and uh, yeah, we made a textile out of it. One other important pillar for me is um, education. This is really, I, I looked at the image and I thought, well, this is a life before Corona because uh, this is not at the moment at a, at a weaving mill, but I really like the fact that, um, yeah, I have a network of old weavers that help me out with the old looms and they have so much knowledge and so much experience and it's really nice to see them pass it on to a different new generation. So, um, yeah, I try to have interns learn from the old weavers and vice versa. Um, we also do a lot of... Uh, yeah, internships for students, uh, guest lectures at universities, uh, just to share knowledge and share experiences. Also something I really like to do is um, have schools over and uh, show them how textiles are made. The little girls here li were like, well, yeah, I always thought that shirts just existed. I never knew uh, what, what, yeah, what it entailed to, uh, to actually produce them. So it really, yeah, they had a sense of okay, if I buy a shirt, someone made it for me. And not only the sewing, but also making the fabric, spinning the yarn, things like that. So I think it's really important to start at an early age with this. Well, then the um, text plus part, because yeah, it's, it's a lot of ambition. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're not there yet. And there are a lot of challenges in what we do at Enschede Textielstad. And quite early on, I noticed, yeah, I'm never going to... Um, yeah, find a solution on my own. We have to collaborate with other partners and uh, make sure that we can close the loop together. This is a small video about the TextPlus Foundation.
so well, as the video already shows, we have actually covered most of the value chain from discarding your old textiles to making new textiles out of it. Um, we are collaborating in the Twente region, in Overijssel, but we also uh, work closely with other partners. I see a lot of you, also Ellen, uh, here, that, that yeah, we really actively want to collaborate with uh, people in other regions and uh, uh, other initiatives in circular textiles. So feel free to also uh, approach me if you want to uh, uh, get in touch with one of the TextPlus partners. Uh, to give a short introduction about all the challenges that everybody has, um, because in 2018, we, start, we started the foundation. Um, we had some chats with all the partners and we, we figured out, yeah, everybody has part of the supply chain and everybody has part of the solution, but we cannot, yeah, we have to combine it to really make uh, big steps. Uh, for Twente Milieu, for instance, it's really important to uh, minimize textile waste in the household waste. Because a lot of uh, citizens don't know that if you have a tea towel with a hole in it, you can also put it in the textile bin instead of in your gray or whatever color your container is in your municipality. So uh, for them, it's really important to educate citizens about uh, yeah, the potential of their textile waste and where to hand it. So they made a new uh, container design. A uh, few of them are, are already um, yeah, as a pilot in the streets. Uh, so this is a textile container that really educates people about um, uh, yeah, what to hand in, what not, and what the other TextPlus partners are going to do with that textile waste uh, once it enter entered the container. Uh, Regionaal Textiel Sorteercentrum Twente. Um, they uh, yeah, manually and mechanically sort textile waste, so not only for uh, um, yeah, reusing it, because yeah, they sort for uh, thrift shops, uh, um, so it's always best to uh, wear garments again and again, but they can also sort waste streams for, for instance, Frankenhuis, who can then recycle uh, uh, all the textiles that are not reusable anymore. Also, a lot of social employment involved there because a lot of people have a great job there sorting the textile waste. So uh, uh, it's a combination of innovation and also social responsibility in providing people with a job. Frankenhuis uh, recycles textiles and uh, their goal is to not only recycle for uh, textiles, but yeah, to find a solution for each fiber that enters their company. So that can either be... Uh, uh, spinnable fibers, but it can also be uh, fibers that can be used in uh, uh, plastic recycling or for the suck cell process or for other chemical recycling processes for textiles. So it's really important for them to find a circular solution for all, uh, all textiles. This is one of their machines uh, in their production line. Suck cell also present here um, does chemical recycling uh, of cotton. Um, also really interesting for the other Text Plus partners because it could be a breakthrough, for instance, for Enschede Textielstad to use uh, suck cell fibers in the warp. Um, and I see a countdown that I have to be quick. Uh, Saxion ha recently opened their circular textile lab. It's really interesting because they have pilot machines to uh, conduct a lot of important research in uh, making fibers out of materials, uh, spin them into yarns with new techniques. So really interesting to, uh, yeah, to visit them or ask about the possibilities because it's really important to test on a small scale before you scale up um, in the industry. And, well, I think I've told enough about what Enschede Textielstad actually does. So, um, but in the project that we're doing together, uh, yeah, together we have a three-year plan called uh, Circular Textiles Twente. Um, one year has passed so far, and uh, yeah, Enschede Textielstad really uh, wants to develop new business models and new production techniques to make uh, flexible production uh, yeah, possible and, and yeah, to provide even more startups and other businesses with sustainable fabrics. So that's actually um, yeah, what I wanted to tell you in short. Uh, are there any questions? Online there is a question. Okay. okay. It's a question from Rebecca de Lange, and she asks, what do we win if we comprise on quality? Lower abrasion means shorter life cycle. Sorry, can you? <laughs> I repeat. <laughs> Uh, what do we win if we comprise on quality? As lower abrasion means shorter life cycle. 
yeah, that's something that we really try to achieve by weaving in a specific way and by um, processing yarns in a way that, uh, yeah, that you make a sturdy fabric that can last a long time. So at Enschedetic Stilstad, we try to uh, minimize the effects that recycling has on abrasion uh, properties, things like that. But of course, if you mechanically recycle, you lose some of the strength. So it's never uh, truly comparable to new fibers. But I think you win a lot as well if you recycle instead of use new fabrics. But it also depends on what uh, type of garment you use it for. Questions here? Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to wait for the mic for the people online to, uh, to hear the question as well. At the front uh, there. Hi. Uh, early on, we had uh, Shirley Schijvens, and she talked about traceability. Uh, what is your uh, vision on traceability in uh, your fabrics? I think it's really important. Also, in Text Plus, uh, uh, a lot of the partners are uh, conducting a lot of research uh, about that. Uh, for instance, uh, Franke Huis and the Sorting Center are really collaborating to uh, improve traceability and uh, find new ways to make fibers even more traceable. Um, yeah, and for me as well, uh, as a business owner, it's, it's of course really important to know uh, where the fibers came from. Uh, there are some markets that don't accept post-consumer material because they don't know what's in it. And a traceable fiber could solve that. So I think it's really important uh, in many uh, segments of the supply chain to have traceability. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks for your attention then, and uh, yeah.